Hello everyone and welcome back to The Football Analyst. So today we'll be doing a Newcastle United tactical analysis. So we're just going to be looking at a few games that they've played in the past and sort of try to determine how Newcastle like to play, how maybe some teams like to play against Newcastle, so potential weaknesses and such. So we're going to be looking at the game they played against Arsenal back in 2023. Uh, which they won 1-0 and in the game they drew against Wolverhampton 2-2 around the same time So these were two games that I found very interesting uh, A recent game against Liverpool highlighted a couple things that happened in this game and Liverpool really tried to take advantage of uh, But these are the two games that I've done just so the video doesn't go too long, but we'll get stuck right into it So as we can see they like to set up in a 4-3-3 with Gimaraes sitting in the holding midfield position or the six, with Trippier pushing up really high. So he likes to push up from this right back position. And it's almost play as a, as a right mid with Dan Byrne coming across to form a back three. So now that we know sort of what shape they like to start with, we'll have a look at them in possession. So when playing out of the back, so this is their back third, Newcastle opt to use a double pivot. So they'll often have Longstaff and Gimaraes there to receive the ball. They'll push Dan Byrne up in a natural left back position as well as Trippier in his right back position and sort of play with a 2 5 or 2 4 1 3 sort of shape with Joel Linton sort of in that center attacking mid area. He likes to drift up and down and sort of play a bit with a bit of freedom. Um, but generally, they try to open up space for Lascelles and Trippier to push. The, the ball forward. They often like to play out on this right hand side and a lot of teams now, which is why they've struggled for form the last few weeks, a lot of teams are f not letting them access Trippier and he's been out injured, he's not been playing as well so there's a factor, that's a factor in it too but they're sort of, they're, they're allowing the ball to come here and then shutting it down as well and forcing it back out to the left where Dan Byrne is not quite as expansive as Trippier obviously and that's where Newcastle can get stuck and they can get stuck passing the ball back and teams can then go up and press and force a clearance or get a you know turnover in their forward third. So that's uh, an important thing to watch but generally they will try and play out through the right exclusively and only go left when they have to. As we can see against Arsenal, they're really setting up for this. So we can see the balls at Shah's feet. We can see the two double pivots in Gimaraes and Longstaff and Arsenal have really come up to squeeze this. So we can see Sakas here looking after Dan Byrne. They're not really pressing Fabian Shah. They're waiting for him to make a play. Uh, but we can see Longstaff has come right across to pull the Enkedia across so that Lascelles is open and Trippier up here has got some space too. So the ball gets played in the long staff, he draws the defenders, he can see Lascelles has got lots of space and of course Trippier is up in this right hand corner just out of frame. So he's able to play the ball across and Lascelles can sort of advance the ball forward. And it gets into this position where he's able to play into, I think that's Almiron uh, in this instance with Trippier providing the width. So you can play into Almiron, Almiron can move forward or pass it wide. So that's generally how they like to transition the ball at least into the middle third, out of their back third. Here's another example of where, that, where you can, if you can deny the ball down the right, um, you can really press up and cause Newcastle to become very shaky at the back. Because obviously, as I said before, Dan Byrne is not as expansive or prosperous as playing through Kieran Trippier. So as we can see, Newcastle have managed to negate play to Trippier. So Lascelles has looked, seen that Trippier's marked. There's a lot of you know Wolves players that are pressed up. And he's decided to come back to Fabian Shah, who then will play to Dan Byrne. We can see the Wolverhampton players are already moving across. They're already anticipating the ball's going to be played to the left back and you know I think that's Huang He Chan here he's ready to press Shah and this Wolverhampton player is ready to come up on Gimaraes so they'll, they'll eventually have even numbers in this area of the field which is what you want when you press even or you want to outnumber your opponent as we can see in the next frame 
they've got a really good presence against the two double pivots. So Newcastle are not really going to be able to get the ball into their double pivots in Longstaff and Gimaraj, as Wolverhampton have got the, the four defenders there. And in the next frame, we can see that Dan Byrne has tried to play to Anthony Gordon. That's often what they'll do. Dan Byrne will just try and play it to Gordon and Gordon will have to try and create something. He's generally not the player they play through to get out of the back third, but oftentimes he has to be because teams will force them down the left. And we can still see the presence that Wolverhampton have in the middle of the park. So they're not gonna allow Newcastle to play into these pivots. They're gonna force them back and around, which is what a lot of good teams have been doing to Newcastle recently. So as we can see, Gordon has played it all the way back and that's where Newcastle just pressed straight away. They all come up. You can see they've got five here against a four. So they've got a numerical advantage. And because the, the play, the pass back was so long, it's given them time to really press up and they're able to get a turnover and go forward and attack. <clears throat> so that's what a lot of teams have been doing, particularly Liverpool. I would have liked to have recorded Liverpool's game, but I just didn't get the chance, but they did this a lot. I think that's why the game was so high scoring. But as we can see, when they're able to push the ball into the midfield third, they sort of tend to play in this four, I mean in this three, two, five sort of setup that most big teams play with nowadays. You know, Man City would do it a lot, Arsenal would tuck their fullback into this central pivot role, whereas Newcastle will push Trippier up onto a wing and tuck Almiron or whoever's playing on the right inside. What's also noticeable is Joel Linton will come in centrally and Gordon will stay wide. So Joel Linton will sort of drift in front of the double pivots and play sort of as a central attacking midfielder with Almiron and Wilson will hold that line as the striker. So here we can see Newcastle try to play through the middle against Wool and they will often try to get it through Gimaraj rather than Longstaff. And this is particularly prosperous when teams try to deny play down the right, but they they sort of open up lanes into midfield. We can see this pocket that Gimarash has got just behind Wolves' front line, front press, and he's able to get the ball and turn and, you know, pretty much pick who he wants, Joel Linton or Almiron, because they're like, there's a one-on-one, -on -one, so someone's got to come press the ball Joel Linton's man has come to press, so he can just play to Joel Linton or carry the ball forward if he thinks he can beat this man. So he's got two options and then there's so much space that they can attack through. So that's one, one way they get the ball through the middle third. Another way they do it is by using Joel Linton. So as we can see, the ball is played to Kieran Trippier. You can see that Wolves have marked the double pivots in Longstaff and Guy Mirage, but what we can't see is Joel Linton over here without a man on him because they've got the front three of Wolves pressing this back line and then two midfielders has come up. They've still got Dan Byrne and what ends up happening is one of these midfielders sort of ends up over here and that leaves Joel Linton to sort of roam. They have to bring a centre back up or something like that for Joel to pick up Joel Linton so he can get afforded some space. And as we can see, he's come into this pocket. The ball's been played to Trippier and he's just drilled a pass because, you know, most fullbacks can hit really good passes. We think of Trent Alexander-Arnold. You know, Kieran Trippier is very expensive. Um, they're able to hit these, these passes with quite a, f a lot of effectiveness and Joel Linton's able to grab this in turn and go with a lot of space. And as I said before, the 4-3-3 can make a good defense against sort of this type of play, but it does rely on a center back stepping up to press a pass into the nine, or Joel Linton in this case. So we can see the Wolves 4-3-3, the three midfielders, three attackers. You can see the fullback has come up onto, I think that's Almiron. Uh, excuse me if I've got that wrong, but that will be the, the wide, the winger. So the ball is played to Trippier. As we can see, the ball is played into Wilson from Trippier. And because the centre back has stepped up, he's, he's able to create pressure. We can see the amount of players Wolverhampton will have around the player receiving. And this can cause the turnover. So there's a lot of ways you can sort of 
get Newcastle to play into areas where you're able to set a trap or put some pressure on and then get a, a pretty clean turnover. They've got a lot of players here that can just get the ball off, off a heavy touch. Here we can see Arsenal shape in the 4-3-3, but they've slid their midfield three ac across, so the left centre mid up here is covering for Trippier. So he's going to put pressure on the ball if it gets played out there. While the right centre mid and central midfielder in Declan Rice, I think that's Jorginho there, are covering uh, Longstaff and Guimaraes. So we can see the front three of Havertz, Nketia and Saka quite narrow because they're trying to avoid playing to the middle of the park. If they're going to be stretched guarding Trippier, they sort of want to keep their forwards narrow. You know, Havertz has go to, gone to press Shah to make him pass the ball and he's chosen to pass to Joel Linton because that's generally who they go to when their double pivots are marked. But as we can see, Arsenal have got a lot of presence in this part of the field and they're almost ready to pounce on a ball played like this. They're almost trying to tempt Newcastle into playing that pass because they've cut off all the other options and Dan Byrne isn't very expansive. So Shah plays it into Joel Linton and that's when they just go and press and they're able to force him into traffic, cause a bad touch and get a turnover. So that's a really effective way Arsenal are able to do that in central areas. Finally, once they get down, once they get through all those barriers that teams put up, you know, if they play down the right, they're able to get down the right through Kieran Trippier, or they're able to play down the middle. This is generally how they set up. In a three, sort of one, six. So Guimaraes tends to just sit back and dictate play. Longstaff likes to be a bit more expansive, as with Joel Linton pushing forward. Trippier will also push forward into a right wing position with Elmeron tucking in and there creates you know, your front six practically. It could even be a 3-1-2-4 if the Longstaff and Jolington don't progress too far forward but generally against most teams that play a 4-5-1 having the six forwards really creates a lot of havoc and it's why Newcastle you know for periods there they tend to score quite prolifically here we can see sort of their shape. So they've got the three at the back, the one in this case, I think that could be Gamerage, it could be, uh, I'd say it is, because I think this is Longstaff here, but we can see the six forwards that they have. So Wilson here, Longstaff and Jolinton, with uh, Anthony Gordon here actually, I think they've just swapped. There's a few players swapped around, but this is essentially the, the setup. Here we can see the overload that Newcastle can get playing down the right. When they get it down the right, they can get a really good overload with Longstaff coming over and Almiron. And of course, the opposition fullback has to come out to take care of Trippier. And with teams playing a 4-5-1 defense, it does require a lot of good 1v1 defending and tracking, of which the big teams mostly are. So this, this works quite well against you know, middle of the range, lower lower level teams. But against good teams and even sort of sneaky good teams like Wolverhampton, it can be quite tricky. Um, they can they can sort of hold up. So Almiron gets the ball into space here. However, despite this, Arsenal still have pretty good coverage in their 4-5-1, despite Tommy Asu having to go take press Trippier and Martinelli having to come back. It's really dependent on your wide players supporting the fullback, particularly on that left-hand side or right, or Newcastle's right, because they play so much down there. We can see that Longstaff is being tracked by Declan Rice as well. Game Rice is coming across, so he'll have to be picked up too. So that Havertz might have to go with him, or Nketiah will have to pick him up, but that's sort of how you can stop Newcastle. You've just got to buy in, have everyone buy in. And as we can see, New, uh, Arsenal have, so Player has come across in Ketia just to sort of put some pressure on. Gabriel's moved across. Jorginho's here as well to stop any cutbacks. So they've got good shape. But generally, this is where Newcastle will try to come down this right-hand side if they can't come through the middle, as most teams would prefer to. But definitely, this right-hand side is Newcastle's strength, not necessarily their left. 
Now we'll just have a quick look at them out of possession and how they defend. So Newcastle defend with the typical 4-5-1 that you see most big clubs defend with, particularly against teams that come up with the 3-2-5. You know, think of Liverpool, uh, Man City would do it. A lot of big teams are, you know, pushing their fullbacks up and playing with three at the back and two in midfield. However, with Newcastle, their midfield three can get caught out by attacking midfielders drifting between the lines because they tend to play a bit of zonal defense. Um, they don't really track their man as well as you would like. So that's been a bit of a problem for them. So here we can see Newcastle's 4-5-1 shape with Joel Linton tracking Havertz, who's pressed forward, Guimaraes on Jorginho, and I assume that would be long stuff. It sort of looks like Dan Byrne, but the shape would be the same. He's pressed onto Declan Rice. We can see Wilson, he's dropped back. He's not necessarily up on the center backs. This is important because if they do get a turnover, they can play it to him into space. He's not right near the center backs, but that is generally their shape. And then we can see the weakness of their midfield three against Wolverhampton. So we can see the four at the back of Trippier all the way to Dan Byrne. And because Wolverhampton has pressed, I've tucked a player in, that could be a winger. Or they've pushed a player wide, so Trippier's had to come up. We can see the midfield three just sort of standing, not have any reference. Then They don't have anyone really to reference to where to be. They can see the ball, but Wolverhampton have really spread them, so they can see that their fullback has pushed right up. And because of this, it's going to stretch Newcastle's defence, and the ball can easily be played out. And Dan Byrne will have to go over, and you know the midfield's not really in position to cover. So the ball is played, the header is made across, and then this Newcastle player has got time and space. And we can see Newcastle's midfield three lagging behind. So this has been an issue for them. The ball gets re recovered. They attack. And we can see the presence that Wolverhampton have at the back post. That could have easily been a goal if the ball had just been chipped over. But that's just how the, the lack of defensive awareness that the Newcastle midfielders have. You know, I wouldn't say any of them are like a pure, you know, defensive midfielder. They're all sort of just... Playmakers, You know, Joel Linton's definitely more attacking-minded, used to being a striker, playing on the wing. He's definitely more attacking-minded. Longstaff is your box-to-box -box midfielder, and Guimaraes isn't necessarily that holding midfielder that you see a lot of clubs have. He's, he's more of a box-to-box, -box, but tends to play in the middle because he's good on the ball. But it can be a weakness for Newcastle, especially against teams that are quite sneaky good, like Wolverhampton. They've got some good talent in their team, and... They were able to draw this match 2-2 and it easily could have gone either way. Now when they press, they typically press with a 4-3-3. They'll push their midfield three up to any single or double pivots and force play into pockets where they can surround the receiver. They do this by sitting back slightly on the centre backs and pouncing quickly on any loose or risky passes that they make. In this frame we can see that a pass from Ben White has been played in Jorginho and they've got a good presence around Jorginho waiting for that pass to be made. So Gimaraes has pressed really quickly up there because the pass hasn't been great. Ben White's been under some pressure previously to the pass and he's just played it quickly. Heavy touch and they're onto him straight away. They've got good presence. You can see Longstaff is coming up on Declan Rice to sort of put pressure in case the ball is played quickly across. It's sort of an exit ball. But instead, Jorginho hurriedly plays it back to Ben White, and that's where Newcastle can really press high. So they don't they don't really press to create a problem for the opposition. They they almost uh, give them let them do it themselves. They give them an opportunity to play through, and then they they almost trap them. So it's a bit of more of a trap rather than a press or forcing a mistake. they sort of waiting for them to make a mistake. But here, Ben White is under pressure, so he plays it back to the keeper, who then tries to play it out the other side. And by that stage, Newcastle have got a really good press on, and they're able to trap them in the corner and force a clearance. 
It also sort of stays similar when the opposition try to play out with three at the back. So here we can see New uh, Wolverhampton with their three at the back. A fullback has moved up. They've got really a five in midfield. There's one up here underneath the scoreboard. And we can still see that New Newcastle tend to man mark the midfield and sit back a little bit waiting for waiting for Wolverhampton or the opposition team to try and play it into one of their midfielders or progress the ball and that's when they'll go and press. Here we can see that all options have become exhausted in the frame before and they try to play out uh, the other way. There's nothing on. Newcastle have come pressed up really well so they have to try and play a long diagonal which gets thwarted and Newcastle get the ball out of bounds and get a throw in so that's generally how they like to press. Overall, some, some summary things to take out of this. You know, Newcastle have been in some relatively shaky form recently. I think it's because most teams are figuring out they really only have one method, one effective method of playing the ball out, and that's through Trippier and down the right flank. They're very weak going to the left, so if you can force them out to the left, that's when you can really put a pressure on, you know, put your press into fifth gear, and you know, get turnovers in their front half and create chances. And they're also quite easy to defend against. As long as you have numbers back, you can protect yourself against the play down the right. They tend not to have too much go down the left. And if you can stop them playing into Gimaraj and Longstaff, they can find it difficult to really dictate play in midfield. So the main aim with Newcastle is to push them down the left-hand side, and that's when they're way less effective than down the right. But for Newcastle, they're trying to create opportunities to play down the right. They're trying to move players into positions that create space for Trippier, Lascelles, Almiron tucking in, John Linton drifting between the lines, coming across to Trippier's side to create an overload. That's how they want to play. So, um, you know, it's a bit one-dimensional, but Newcastle found it effective you know, for the last half of last season and it's first half of this season, but teams are starting to figure them out. So it'll be interesting to see if they can come up with something else. Eddie Howe can come up with, you know, a new sort of tactic or new players coming into the team. But uh, right now, uh, if they play a big club, just watch out for those tactics. All in all, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've enjoyed the analysis on Newcastle. Let me know if there's anything that you notice that I've spoken about or I haven't. Make sure to chuck that down in the comments below. As always, have a great day and may your team be forever winning.